e andare incontro al futuro con la determinazione non soltanto di credere alle nuove idee, quanto di fuggire dalle vecchie. Hi everybody, I'm very happy to talk to you today about social business and cure thalassemia. First of all, there is a warning because this topic has caused many challenges to my life and the same could happen to you who are listening to my talk now. There could be challenges in your life. Here you find some newspapers and TV channels who have interviewed me for this topic of social business and also some universities all over the world, in the US and in Europe, when I gave some lectures and talks about social business and cure thalassemia. Now, let's talk about this. Um, Warren Buffett is one of the richest men in the world, and a few years ago, he gave an interview where he said that he grew in the right place, uh, he grew up in the right place, in the right family, he had many opportunities, and so he became very rich but he just won, he, he's just a winner of the ovarian lottery. I was very impressed when I heard the speech of uh, Warren Buffett, and I thought that I'm not Warren Buffett, of course, but I grew up in Rome, in a family who gave me the opportunity to go to university, to learn languages, to travel, so I feel very lucky, and I feel that I have, I'm also a winner of the ovarian lottery. If I were born, for example, in Bangladesh, in a rural village, I would probably now live there in a village with two dollars per day. And this has been a great source of inspiration for me for what you're gonna listen now. Now, let's talk about thalassemia, which is the most spread genetic mortal disease of the world. It's a blood disease and it's a, the lack of hemoglobin in the blood. The hemoglobin is, is the one responsible for bringing the oxygen all over the body. And unfortunately, 100,000 children die every, every year all over the world for this disorder. And as you can see in the chart, it mainly affects Southeast Asia and the Middle East, not Western countries anymore. Um, a thalassemia child needs to have blood transfusions every month, otherwise he dies. And, uh, but anyway, the average survival age in developing countries is about 10 years so of age. And most of the, of the kids, they die very, very young because they don't even have the money to do the blood transfusions. The good news is that there is a solution for this. It's called bone marrow transplantation, invented 30 years ago by an Italian genius called Guido, Professor Guido Lucarelli. And since then, almost 3,000 BMTs have been done, transplantation all over the world, and more than 50% of these have been done by Professor Lucarelli and his staff. You can see him here with uh, Luciano Pavarotti. They were very good friends, and Luciano Pavarotti was also a financial supporter of Professor Lucarelli and his research on thalassemia. Now, Pietro Sodani is my best friend since we were kids. He's like a brother for me. And he works with Professor Lucarelli since 13 years, and he has done more than 400 transplantations. This is why I know so much about thalassemia, even if it doesn't exist almost anymore in Italy. Pietro started to volunteer for an Italian charity based in Florence called Cure to Children, who did something amazing. They decided to create a bone marrow transplantation unit in Pakistan in a public hospital but with local doctors and local nurses. And they had the same results of Western countries, but just one-sixth of the cost. So this is very important so more people can afford to have this cure. Here you see one of the kids before going to the uh, transplantation unit. 
And uh, Pietro introduced me to this charity. I liked it a lot. So I started to be a volunteer as well for internet marketing, which is my passion since 20 years. And then they asked me to travel with them to Asia. I went to Pakistan for, one, for, five, for 24 hours and then also to India. And then something amazing happened. I was in Frankfurt in the airport waiting for a connecting flight to go to India. And I was walking and there was a bookstore within the airport. And I like a lot of books. So I entered in the bookstore. There were many, many books. And I don't know why, but my eyes looked this book. A World Without Poverty of Muhammad Yunus. I didn't know who this man was. And I thought that the, the book was kind of boring. But I read the, the bio, the biography of this man. He won the Nobel Prize, the Nobel Peace Prize, and he had invented microcredit, and I had heard of it. So I bought the book. When I came back to Italy, after one month, I read the book and I was shocked and impressed by his idea of social business. I was very, very touched. And uh, so I had a crazy idea. I still don't know why I did it. I just know that I did it. I sent an email to Professor Yunus without knowing him, without knowing his email address. I went to the Yunus Center website. There was a generic info email address. And it took one hour to, to, to write a very short email. And in my job, I have been able to talk three times to Bill Gates and once to Steve Jobs. But it happened in the US at, in, at conferences, at events, during the Q&A sessions. I never sent an email to Bill Gates or Steve Jobs, of course. So in this email, I told him that I am an entrepreneur. I'm also volunteering in a charity. I'm very fascinated by social business. And I wanted to create a social business for thalassemia. I have no idea on how to do it. But from now, it was 2009, I will start brainstorming about it on how I can do it. And then something amazing happened. The following day, Professor Yunus replied to me from his mobile phone. Someone forwarded him the email internally, and he replied to me. And he said, this is very interesting. Let's talk about it. I was shocked. I was shocked. <laughs> I had to take a shower in the morning too. <laughs> and then, uh, in the following weeks, um, we exchanged like one email per week for some weeks, but then it was difficult to move forward. And since I'm very pragmatic, I asked him a meeting. So I went to Bangladesh, to Dhaka, with Lawrence Faulkner, the founder of Cure to Children, and my friend Pietro. We met Professor Yunus in the headquarters of Grameen Bank. And, um, and uh, Grameen Healthcare and Cure to Children signed an agreement to do a social business for thalassemia in Bangladesh. So something really concrete happened. This story became one chapter of the new book of Professor Yunus, Building Social Business. There are 16 pages about the story that I just told you. And you can also read the original email that I sent to Professor Yunus and his reply to me. But what is a social business? Professor Yunus gives seven principles. Now we'll tell you the most important ones. First of all, a social business is a company whose goal is to solve a social problem and not profit maximization. Number two, a social business has to be financially self-sustainable, selling products or services in the marketplace without relying on donors' money, like charities do, and uh, the revenues have at least to cover the costs. Third, Investors can have back just the original amount of money invested originally in the company. From that moment on, they can't get any dividend. So you can't get rich with social business. This is by design and by default. Number four, very, very important in my opinion, people working in a social business are paid at market prices. 
This will be revolutionary looking 10, 20 years ahead from now because young people coming out from universities and from high schools can go to a for-profit world or a social business world with the same salary and a similar career path. Now they don't have this choice. And you know, people always make difference all over the places. Money is a commodity, people are not. Professor Yunus is Muslim, but if you're Christian, the Pope, in an encyclical letter, uh, wrote that there should be an economic initiative which, without rejecting profit, aim at higher goal than the mere logic of profit. So this is social business in other words. So it's a universal principle regardless of your religion belief. Then, what happened? For a year, we wrote a business plan, Professor Yunus and his staff, and uh, myself and my friends doctors, but then things didn't move forward. One of the reasons was that uh, the board of directors of Cure to Children didn't believe at that time in the social business idea. They believed in the classical charity model, so donations. So after one year, me and Pietro, we resigned because we saw no progress in the project. We had no idea what to do next. We just knew that we were going anywhere. We weren't going anywhere. But then another amazing thing happened. This young lady from India, Nitya Agarwal, was in Rome having bone marrow transplantation with uh, Professor Lucarelli and Pietro Sudani. Everything went okay at the beginning, but after a few weeks, she rejected the transplantation. So she is still alive, but she's still sick with thalassemia. It could happen. Usually when these things happen, the parents start to scream with the doctors to say bad words to them. But the grandfather of this young lady went to Pietro and he told him, you did your job, you did very good. I, know that I knew that there were some risks, I have nothing to blame to you. I give you a present. I give you a computer. So Pietro called me and he said, listen, something crazy happened. You have to meet this guy. As I said, I'm very pragmatic. So we had a dinner together in a restaurant. And I explained to him the project that we were supposed to do in Bangladesh with Professor Yunus. And we decided to do the same thing in India, but without Professor Yunus, with the same principle, but without Grameen being involved, and without your two children. And we wrote the first draft of the business plan in the napkin of the restaurant, like in the movies. <coughs> then we went, to, we went to India, to Hyderabad in southern India. This is uh, the welcome at the airport, embarrassing and emotioning at the same time. This is his family, Shandrakan family at the airport. Then, one day, Mother Teresa had a heart problem. She went to a cardiologist, and he cured her. But then she asked him, if I bring you poor children, can you cure them? And you know, in Asia, healthcare is mainly private, not public. He said, no, this is a private hospital. You need money. And she told him, cure the poor children. The money will come. She's Christian. He's Hinduist. When she died, he was so inspired by these words of Mother Teresa that he resigned from the hospital. This is Dr. Devi Shetty, which is now considered the Henry Ford of Indian healthcare all over the world. And uh, he founded in Bangalore, in southern India, the Narayana Hospital, which is now one of the largest cardi cardiological pediatric hospitals in the world. He has been awarded as Social Entrepreneur of the Year in many places, you can see here in, in the slide. He has mentions in important TV, magazines, and universities all over the world. Narayana has democratized healthcare. It's, it's healthcare, low-cost, high-quality healthcare for poor people. Like Dr. Shetty says, every child on the world has the right to have a heart surgery and many other things. And now, um, 40, uh, the cost of a heart surgery at Narayana is just 40% compared to other Indian hospitals. And this, the results are the same of the best American hospitals. They have 5,000 beds, 2,000 in Bangalore and 3,000 in other cities. Within, within five years, they will have 30,000 beds. It's amazing. 
and 12% of all heart surgery in India are done at Narayana. We have been to Narayana in Hyderabad, where Chandra Khan lives, and then in Bangalore, where is the main uh, the headquarter. And so, Cure Thalassemia is a social business founded by Chandra Khan Agarwal, Pietro Sudani, and myself, following the seven principles of Professor Yunus to address thalassemia for poor people. I'm very proud that the Scientific Advisory Board is composed of the two greatest scientists in the world in thalassemia, Professor Lucarelli, who invented the cure, and my friend Pietro, who also invented BMT from the mother, which is an evolution of the original protocol. I'm very proud to have these two people in our organization. But how the business model works? Um, this um, disorder affects at the same time rich people and poor people. And so, um, every four pain patients, we take the profit, not in our pockets, like if you were a normal private hospital. We put it aside and we use it to cover the cost for someone who can't afford it, which is the fifth bed. In this way, we are a social business because we address a social problem, we don't get any dividend out of it. So we respect the seven principles of Professor Yunus. How I got the idea? Pablo Picasso said, good artists copy, great artists steal. <laughs> and so, I started to read many books about social entrepreneurship and to watch TED Talks, and I was very inspired by this TED Talk about Aravind Eye Care Hospital, which is an amazing place in India, founded 30 years ago by a doctor who decided to do a surgery for cataract with this with this model of cross subsidiation so rich people pay and um, the profit is used to, to give to poor people. And Professor Yunus implemented the same thing in Bangladesh. And so I'm very fascinated because it is the best of both worlds, the efficiency of the private sector, but also the solidarity of the public hospitals that we have here in Europe. This is the, MOU, the agreement that we signed with Dr. David Shetty. You can see him, Pietro, me, and other people. Another thing we did is the freemium business model in healthcare. So we, um, Dr. Sudani gives free advice via email on bone marrow transplantation to patients from all over the world. Every day we receive emails from all over the world. And also four times a year he's in Bangalore in India and he visits for free patients. Doctors don't do this usually. This fact, this freemium business model, gives us a lot of word of mouth among the thalassemia community. It's what the, the marketing guru Seth Godin calls a purple cow. So my advice is start small, but think big from day one. And one of the reasons is that there is less competition. If you think small, many people think small. A few people think big. Don't underestimate this. And then follow your passion. Like Professor Yun says, wherever there is a social problem, you can create a social business to solve that problem. So cure thalassemia, no more transfusions. Thank you for your attention. Bello. Grazie Eugenio. Veramente un esempio virtuoso. Grazie.